Assalamu alaikum my dear students welcome back to the course of communication skills this is Janzeb your teacher and uh, I do hope that you are staying at home and staying safe so may Allah protect us all from this disease today we are discussing solving a word puzzle and developing the communication skills so in this course we'll be studying how to solve word puzzles in order to develop the language awareness so language awareness is something that is required by all of us that since we are studying English language and which is uh, lingua franca. Uh, lingua franca is a language that is used commonly by all the people. Uh, for example, if you go to different countries, you will be using English language. So English language will be used all over. Uh, for example, if you go to Emirates, you need not speak in Arabic. If you go to Germany, you need not speak in German language. So if you know English language, you can speak everywhere. So in order to improve English language, there are so many strategies that we can use. So solving word puzzle is another good activity that we can use in order to develop the language awareness. So what is awareness first of all? This is a state or ability to perceive to feel or to be conscious of events objects or sensory patterns more broadly it is a state or quality of being aware of something in biological psychology awareness is defined as human or an animal's perception and cognitive reaction to a condition or event so cognitive means your mental abilities so in very simple words this uh, word awareness is uh, the ability of a person and of animal as well to feel and to uh, know about certain things using our senses so we can use our senses to get to know about certain things and it is a quality that we use uh, to get aware of something to get the knowledge of something so in order to get the knowledge we should be having that ability in us that whether we can get the knowledge or not so language awareness like in this uh, explicit knowledge about the language and conscious perception and uh, sensitivity in language learning language teaching and language usage so what we do is we uh, adopt uh, conscious perception and sensitivity in uh, language learning and in this way we learn a language or we learn uh, the portions or components of a language good la uh, knowledge about language a conscious understanding of how languages work of how people learn them and use them so this is all language awareness so in very simple words language awareness is our knowledge as to how do we use the knowledge how do we use language how do we learn a language first of all we should be aware of the importance of the la language so this is basically the language awareness so we should know the importance of language what the language is and how the language should be used what are the components of language how should we develop our ability to understand and learn any language so as a prerequisite for the restructuring uh, of the learner's mental representation of the language, some degree of conscious awareness is necessary. So we should know uh, to what extent uh, we can use our conscious awareness. So conscious awareness is something that we should use everywhere. That we should know what is lacking in us, we should be uh, finding our lacks and wants, okay, what is lacking in us, what is the thing that we want in this way we can easily know about the language awareness that what kind of language should we learn what kind of uh, language is necessary to what extent learning a new language can help us it is said that if you learn more than one language it activates the working of your brain and if you are multilingual like you know more than two languages the more your brain is working in that position so learning languages activates our uh, abilities our cognitive system our mental abilities that if we learn many languages we are more intelligent 
So first of all, self-awareness. We should know that why to become self-aware and what is necessary in order to be self-aware. First of all, we should check in uh, ourselves. Uh, what is the thing that we need to learn? What is the knowledge that we need to gain? What is the importance of that knowledge? How can we use that knowledge in empirical uh, circumstances like in our practical usage in simple words? So, uh, we should check our needs, our lacks, our wants. So, lacks are those things which we are lacking in. We are, uh, we are not having those capabilities. So, that is our lack. And want is what we are wanting to develop. So, first of all, if we are aware of something, for example, if I am aware of uh, the importance of English language, so I should uh, be wanting to learn it. And this may be my lack, but that I, I may not be knowing how to use this language in order to proceed in the word. Then discover your aptitude. Whatever we are, uh, like uh, in whatever parameters we want to get self-awareness, we should be discovering our aptitude first of all. For example, uh, at the time of admission, so many students take admission in uh, some particular program without knowing their aptitude and they become failures. So first of all, in order to choose our aim in study or in profession both, we should be following our aptitude. So, because if we uh, go away from our aptitude, we are uh, destroying ourselves, we are creating uh, so many hurdles in our way. So, those difficulties can be avoided if we are discovering our aptitude and following that. So, if we know that learning English is important for us, then we should be having this aptitude towards language. No work can be done without the aptitude. So, if we do some, some work or some task without having an aptitude for that, there is definitely some uh, mishandling in that and we may not be able to get success. Then, ignore the judgments of people. Whenever you are about to learn something, do not uh, uh, follow all the judgments which uh, may be negative, negatively criticized on you. You should follow the route you have chosen for yourself. Try to know what you want, what you want to become, what you want to learn, what you want to get. So, people may give their judgments, but you need to follow your aptitude and your way that you have chosen for yourself. Then, look at yourself from an outsider's perspective. Then how do people may think of you? With this state of capacity that you are having, what is the... Uh, uh, po the possible idea that may be generated in the mind of a person who is looking at you from some different perspective. So, if you feel that if you are not uh, a good English uh, reader, writer, listener and speaker, so what can other people feel about you? Because this is a language that may come across us in so many phases of life. Since we are learning uh, economics and uh, business field, so in that, even that we need to read very good quality books and for them we need to have good knowledge, good reading speed, good reading ability and we will get all those things if we are focusing and paying attention on them. Then do accept what you discover. Whatever you find in you, you should discover it. This is bad trait of human beings that we are our own advocates and we are judges of others. Rather, we should be advocating others and we should judge ourselves. So, we should accept what we discover in us. For example, if I discover in me that I am not a good speaker, I am not a good listener, I am not a good reader or writer. So, I should be accepting the fact and I should be knowing the fact and then more closely I should focus on the fact that I should uh, rebuild those capacities in me which are lacking and then the final thing, practice, repeat and then again practice and then again repeat. So, I should practice those abilities which I am lacking. I should use those things which I am uh, feeling that those things should be within my judgment, within my knowledge, within my practical work. So, if I feel that uh, learning English is better for me, so I should practice for that. I should repeat the strategies. I should practice more and I should repeat them again. Now, since we are talking about puzzles, so puzzles are not just about numbers though. 
Many puzzles focus on words and word puzzles can help you improve your English. And they can be a fun hobby that also helps you to learn the language and by playing games you can build up your English in so many ways. And what is also great is that you can do most of these puzzles online or on a mobile device. Like you can play such activities online and you can download such activities which you can use without using internet and offline you can uh, play them. So we have been playing so many games in our mobile phone. So mobile phone is uh, a device that we should use for the constructive purposes. So if we try to go for constructive purposes, there's so many educational things that we can find online in Google Store, uh, Google Play Store, in uh, Apple Store. We can find so many variants of such applications. For example, if you just write the word vocabulary in them, you will get so many uh, simple apps that are there to develop your vocabulary skills. So we are born in such a digital age where we can access these things and especially by sitting in this uh, COVID-19 session when we are facing so many difficulties in learning certain things we should be uh, in a habit to get more and more knowledge from those applications, puzzles and puzzles are not only to build up your vocabulary they also activate your mental process they also activate your learning for example the game chess is a world class game and all the entrepreneurs all the businessmen they play the game and people keep playing a single game for years so they use their mental abilities they this is a game of patience you learn how to get patient you learn how to feel when you are being defeated so all these things help in your business so all those people since you are studying economics you should be playing chess in a way that it teaches you so many things so in this way it activates your abilities your thinking process so do the puzzles so the puzzles games are always there and they help you in building up your english they help you in building your writing and reading process so much so we should be using those things in our mobile phones there are so many advantages of learning english using puzzles Improving your language proficiency with puzzles has some added benefits on the top of super fun that you're not only enjoying the game You're not only looking at uh, the colors that are added to them. You're not only uh, getting a fear of getting lost you're not uh, only uh, in a way to increase your level in the game, but also you're learning your English So it is a fun activity all the puzzles are fun activities that add something good to your uh, thinking process your learning ability your awareness so those things those puzzles whatever are available and they are adding something good to your learning of a language then another advantage is that you don't need a partner for that until or unless you want one so if you're alone you can play with your own self you can play online you can play with a virtual opponent, you can play with a real opponent, that is all up to you. But you can play alone, so that is what matters the most. So in this COVID-19 session, for example, if we are at homes, we are staying home and uh, uh, saving lives. So even in this process, if we want to build our English or our language capacity, so we should be downloading these things rather than the junk we download and we should play those uh, fun games and all those things that we want to uh, uh, work on so these can help us and these will definitely help us if we are into them and then uh, there are so many options as well for example online and uh, you can play them online you can play them on your mobile phone in offline mode you can play them on paper too you can use whiteboard, you can use papers, for example, Hangman is a game that you can play on paper, you can play Scrabble on paper. All these games were initially meant to be played on paper, but in digital world, they're converted to the mobile phone. People are getting money out of them that they're uh, having those apps in Play Stores and people are downloading them, people are playing them 
and people are getting knowledge. For example, I uh, have downloaded two, uh, two to three apps in my mobile phone and they are the build, word building activities. And in a super fun, I try to learn new words. For example, there's so many words there in a puzzle form. Uh, there is a, a bat, uh, uh, like uh, the bat we play with and the bat that flies. And those two pictures are uh, given uh, up on the uh, on that app and underneath there is uh, there are three boxes and I need to write the word so I know that both the pictures are representing the same word bat so I put it in put in it and it is correct so this is one example that I am quoting there are thousands and thousands of examples there online and then a great warm up for the fluent you quiz mode. So Fluent U is a website that gives you so many online quizzes, there's so many puzzles. So you can use them uh, as a warm-up activity uh, if you are going to learn some language. So this really helps in learning the nouns and verbs of a language, ins and outs of a language. And last but not the least, it is a challenge for your brain. No doubt if you are playing some game, this definitely helps us that uh, we we feel that we are in a challenging position we need to build up our level we need to be knowing certain thing for example in every online game there is uh, because uh, they have developed an app and they want to learn from that app so they have uh, tricked us they give us certain uh, free uh, hints we can use them and after them those hints are paid so if we are very good uh, into the game or if we are addicted to the game we spend the real money in order to purchase those hints so this is really a challenge for the brain so if a person is not uh, willing to spend the real money on the game so it doesn't matter at all keep thinking so by thinking you will get new words or you can share since we are living in a digital age you can share the picture with your friends so one of them may be knowing it and that they can help you so without spending a single penny you can play and learn so you're playing you're challenging yourself you are getting uh, good knowledge you're getting uh, added up information in the language skills and you are learning well now coming to the important phase of this video lecture we have six educational and entertaining English puzzles you will find them uh, quite useful that you can do while relaxing in your spare time along with the resources where you can find them. Doing these puzzles can be an efficient way for you to learn English vocabulary and so many other things related to the language. And they become familiar with the, uh, rather we become familiar with the common grammar rules and we increase our overall English comprehension. So this adds something good to our uh, language comprehension. We get to know about language, we get to know about the vocabulary, about the grammar rules. All is done in a fun way just by playing those puzzles. So from those six entertaining word puzzles for learning, we have first game as Hangman. So Hangman is a classic game and it is there in uh, so many versions you can find it in app store in play store it is everywhere it is uh, uh, internet is replete with hangman you can find it everywhere and you can also play the game on your papers on the whiteboard as well so you can use it offline and online in both ways you can challenge people you can challenge your, the virtual opponents you can challenge your family members your friends or you can play alone it is all up to you hangman is a classic puzzle popular not only with the english learners but also with the native speakers so all those who are trying to learn english language or who are the native speaker of english language this game is popular with all of them uh, traditionally it is a guessing game played by at least two people so at least you should be having two people around uh, if you are not having two people, even the computer plays with you. So player one thinks of a word in this game with a certain number of letters 
and they draw a blank line for each letter. For example, if I have thought of uh, the name of a movie, uh, uh, A Tale of Two Cities, so I should be using one dash for a, four dashes for tail, two dashes for off, and five dashes for cities. So, in this way, I will write them down somewhere. Player two has to guess uh, the letters that are included in the word. If player two correctly guesses a letter that may be there in the word, so player one has to reveal all the places where the letter appears. So, in those blank lines, that letter will be filled by uh, player one who is guessing, uh, who is uh, uh, playing the game basically. So, for example, if the letter E appears three times, so he will write it three times there. If guess is wrong, player 1 gets to draw a part of man on a hanging pole like a head or an arm. So, that will be there, the drawing will be there with each wrong answer by the player. Typically, player 2 has about 8 wrong guesses before being hung and losing the game. If player 2 manages to guess the word before, uh, before the time, then they will be called the winner. There are many varieties of this game available. So, if a word is very long, it might be acceptable to add more parts for the man. For example, you can add ears, you can add hair to allow for more wrong guesses. And you can also play with the computer instead. So, you do not need a partner for this puzzle. And now, what are the benefits of playing hangman? So, first of all, the game is fun, which helps uh, us with motivation. Secondly, playing hangman means that you get to know new words and develop better feeling for English spelling. There is an element of luck in winning the game, but it also requires a good understanding of the language. For example, if you know uh, the common prefixes or suffixes, you will be likely to guess a few letters based on are revealed ones. This is quite good in this way. You are not only learning the language, you are also learning the morphology of the language, uh, that uh, how we can add some beginning letters to a word, how can we add some ending letters to a word, just like uh, able uh, and multi, un, in, dis, all these things. Though native speakers mainly play hangman for a challenge and for some fun, an English learner will get the most benefit from this game by paying attention to the units of meaning in a word, which is also called morpheme. So, we can get to know different words, how we can constitute more words with that, how we can add more things. So, this is the uh, like uh, these are the advantages of playing this one single game. You are using your mental capabilities, you are learning new English words, you are learning the grammar of English, you are learning the root words, you are learning the prefixes, you are learning the suffixes. This is all by playing just one game. So, this one puzzle game can give you this so many add-ons to your language skills. On second number, I place crossword puzzles. So, crossword puzzles, they are also uh, classics and uh, one of the classic games ever. You may have found them in your newspapers that uh, come to your house daily. There is always a section of crosswords, though that may be in Urdu, if the newspaper is in Urdu. So, in English newspaper, you can find this crossword in every good newspaper. Crosswords also channelize your brain. They also help you in learning and recalling new words or the old words that you have already learnt. So, what are the rules of crossword puzzle? A crossword puzzle is a word game where a player is given clues to guess the words. Each hint leads to a word written in rows of squares that cross each other. This means some words share some letters and once you find a letter, you will be rewarded with letters of one or more words with the other clues. A hint could be something like uh, the plural form of a person and the answer might be the people or if the hint was offspring, the answer might be a child. So, there are so many benefits of uh, playing crossword puzzle. Crossword puzzles helps you widen your vocabulary, 
uh, significantly uh, uh, clues are synonyms and uh, with the help of those synonyms you learn different new words of English and this is not only loved by the non-native speakers this is also this is more loved by the native speakers basically and sometimes the game is too difficult and challenging where we can uh, quit the game so that is the very place where we don't have to quit we have to use our brain to solve the activities and puzzles uh, and there's so many crossword games in which you can find your suitable language level and by selecting that you will be asked the questions according to the level of your abilities you can also find uh, a crossword puzzle with particular vocabulary topic for example if you're more interested in movies so that will be asking you about movies if you know more about fruits, so all the possible options will be given from the fruits you can also use it uh, in a notebook so this is a fun game this uh, includes puzzles which uh, improves your verbs and nouns you learn so many new words you guess the words you get the synonyms of the word for example if I'm using the word beautiful I can use excuse it in replacement of it if I am using the word wonder or surprised I can use uh, the word stunned or flabbergasted for this reason so there are so many new words which come to our memory there's also a good game word result so in this again we need to uh, jumble up certain things uh, for example if uh, things are not in good order and we have to put the words in correct order now this mobile app uh, like uh, this is a simple game a player gets a board of uh, scrambled letters to form words each word that you put together gives a different score if you make a word using bonus styles you will earn more points you can play alone you can play against a friend or against a stranger in the community you can also play in a team or, or you can play with a computer as well so there are certain benefits of this game too the game is interactive and quick to play its social aspect makes it more fun as a learner your writing skills become stronger as you practice forming words from letters you will also get better at spellings out a word fast such an ability will be handy when for example you need to spell a word while texting so you must have seen certain times that you are given a, a word in uh, in which the spellings are in different order they're not in proper order and you need to figure out what the real word is so you need to challenge your brain for that and we are sometimes forced to challenge our brain because we want to excel in that we want to give quick answers so in, for that reason this is a very good game and this is also a rule of English those people who have uh, good reading ability they can read any English word provided if the first and the last letter of English is written in correct order let's see how if you can read this you have a strange mind too I couldn't believe that I could actually understand what I was reading the phenomenal power of the human mind according to a research at Cambridge University it does not matter in what order the letters in a word are the only important thing is that the first and the last letter be in the right place the rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without a problem this is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself but the word as a whole amazing yeah and I always thought spelling was important so yes spellings are important but as far as uh, the strategy is concerned when the first and the last letters are same we can uh, use the uh, pronunciation we can use the words very correctly because we have already seen them so this is a phenomenal power of human mind if you can read them it means that you do have that power uh, vested in you you can use that power in learning English language by using th uh, those uh, fun activities and all those strategies that I am talking about this is a good initiative by British Council such so Johnny's grammars word challenge so this is by British Council and this is a real challenge to your brain that you use your mind to activate the inner 
abilities of it in order to learn a language. Johnny's grammar's word challenge is a straightforward challenge. You answer as many spellings, vocabulary and grammar uh, as you can in 60 seconds. So you're given a time slot of 60 seconds and there's so many questions that you need to answer. And these challenges are three in three categories. Uh, there are words, there is grammar, there are spellings. So you are getting improvement and you are being tested at three levels. And there are three levels of the game. You begin with uh, novice level which is easy level, then you reach to expert level which is hard level. You need to complete all these levels and you can get uh, certain badges like grammar guru, you can get the badge of word wizard and supreme uh, speller badges. And you can share these uh, with other people uh, as your uh, like uh, some achievement. So since Grammar Guru is uh, initiated by British Council to help English learners improve their language skills, having fun with it. So this is at the same time giving you fun and at the same time you're learning something since British Council is all the time uh, working for the L2 learners like those who are learning English as a second language. So they're creating certain good activities. So this is one of the best activities of them. You can test your everyday English with common vocabulary uh, in this, like uh, you can have topics like traveling, ordering food, uh, making small talk or discussing your hobbies with each other. And playing this quiz also helps your grammar. The tested issues are the most commonly used ones like uh, the prepositions or the irregular use of verbs. The feedback you get on wrong answer will help you learn and improve yourself. Playing Johnny Grammar's word challenge means practicing to retrieve words, spellings and grammar rules very quickly. So for uh, to play this game, you need to make sure to also apply these words and concepts in your daily conversation in English. So no game or no puzzle is helpful until or unless you're using them or uh, like uh, you're bringing them in your practical conversation. So those things are based on your practical conversation. You have learned a word, share it with people while speaking. You have learned a new grammar rule, do use it when you're speaking. You have learned new synonym. You should be speaking it when you're talking to the people. Then word wrangling. This is another good game and uh, this is uh, a quick booster of your mind. You can learn very good things, good items of English language by playing this game. Word Wrangling is uh, another game. Uh, this is also made by British Council for English Learners. So since uh, Johnny, uh, the Johnny's English is also a good approach to the English language. So this will also help you. You practice uh, looking for patterns in this and shapes and relation between letters and words. And there are actually eight puzzles included in this game. In stem words, you guess words from the stem and uh, the meaning provided. What's missing gives you three random looking words as a clue and you have to guess the word that is missing. In the puzzle, someone stole the dash. Players have to use the provided walls to fill in the blanks and form the correct use of English words. WordMate is another series in this that tests your knowledge of compound nouns while anagrams check your abilities to spell words correctly like words will be in disordered way and you have to correct them so that is an anagram. The turn around puzzle is a challenging one that gives you clues for two words that share the same letters but have different spellings. So those uh, like uh, homonyms which are having different uh, spellings but having the same uh, pronunciation or the letters may be the same. So in this way you need to be knowing all these things. The last two puzzles which uh, uh, like uh, for example WHICH and WITCH which. So these focus on grammatical usage of uh, various words you can use them. So playing word wrangling helps you learn the uh, usage of words and rather develop a better sense of English language. So playing these words and games, they are not only fun, but they're actually the mind boosters. While playing those games, we develop a good skill in us. We have a competition, 
we have a sense of that competition that uh, makes us challenge our brain. Uh, we get to think more, we get to learn more things from the vocabulary, we get to know more grammatical issues and we improve uh, spellings. Since we know that we have two kinds of uh, uh, memory uh, if we talk about vocabulary. So, there is a uh, active vocabulary and there is a stagnant vocabulary. Stagnant vocabulary is the vocabulary that uh, we uh, we know the words, but we cannot recall them when we are speaking or writing. But when we are reading them, we may know what is meant by the word. And your active vocabulary is that you use when you are speaking and writing. So, what we need to do is we do not need to cram the dictionary, rather we should play these games and we should bring those words which are new to us in our active memory and that can only be done if we are practically using those words. For example, if you have played a game in a day and you get across two to three new words, you should rehearse those, those words with your fellows. So, you should talk to them about those words, you should use them in your daily activities in this way, you will be able to build up your mental lexicon. So, lexicon is your uh, dictionary in your mind. So, your dictionary should not be passive one. You should have an active dictionary that you can use in order to test or talk to the people. So, this is a very good activity. All these games and challenges, they will help you a lot. Then Scrabble. Scrabble is also a crossword activity and this is uh, a very good game and a quite a classic game. This is available in uh, paper form. You can play it on paper. This is available in a board form. You can arrange the words on a board uh, just like Ludo and Monopoly. This is also available online. So, you can play it online or offline. When uh, uh, playing Scrabble, anywhere from two to four players will enjoy the game. Though you can alone play the game, uh, the object when playing is to score more points than other players, so you need more people with you. As words are placed on the game boards, points are collected and each letter that is used in the game will have a different point value. The main strategy is to play words that have the highest possible score based on the combination of letters. So, this is a crossword, but this is giving you some value of each word. So, by making a very good word, you can get very uh, good score. So, a standard Scrabble board will consist of cells that are uh, located in a large square grid. The board offers 15 cells high and 15 cells wide. The tiles used on the game will fit in uh, each cell on the board and there are 100 tiles that are used in the game and 98 of them will contain letters and point values and the two blank tiles that can be used as wild tiles to take the place of any letter. So, when a blank tile is played, uh, it will remain in the game as the letter is substituted for. So, this is altogether a unique and exquisite game. So, I have used the word exquisite twice so that you can learn it. So, we can uh, use this game in order to develop and enrich our vocabulary. So, if we are very good at our vocabulary, we can play more and we can get good score. Now, what you need to do is you just do not need to learn the lecture for the examination, but you need to download all these activities. So, by downloading these six fun games, you can really boost up your mental process, your lexicon, your uh, mental co your, your cognitive abilities and this will help you in learning the language. So, I hope this lecture was quite enough for you in order to learn what these things are meant for and how can we use these things in order to get good proficiency in English language. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. So, these are the references that I have used in order to bring all the data for you. So, you can visit them and you can go to so many other uh, websites or stores, for example, uh, in your Apple store or in your Play store, where you can find so many such apps which can help you in increasing your vocabulary and developing your English language skills. And this is highly uh, like uh, impressive thing on the part of those uh, websites that they have free of cost given you such a data that you can uh, 
without having a help of any teacher just by sitting at your home your places you can learn so much of the language itself so what you need to do is you need to uh, download for you the games that you are amused with the, the games particularly uh, with the re reference to the increase of uh, learning in your language your communication skill and they will help you stay tuned thank you very much